Now let's take a look at putting some crowds in here. And what I've done for this is use my concert piece, the advanced version, because they're not locked in and you can actually move each peep to where you want it, turn it. And with the advent of the new way to control bones within our our props you can also go in and set the peeps as you want to like to have it stare up at the building or the saucer or, or something like that from there I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my preview camera so that we can work without losing our camera shot so what I'm going to do and I'll just show you how I set these up even though I have one already set up is I'm going to go ahead and load the peeps in and you can get these at the marketplace but it has to be the advanced version so you can move them around okay now as you see this is the predetermined uh, setup that I used when I created the peeps but each one of these can be selected and moved and manipulated now we can go ahead of course and move it in mass or we can use our selection tool and we can just grab them one at a time and just move them to various positions on the concert crowds that I have placed. This is three concert crowds and what I did basically was just move some of them around and point them up to where they're actually looking at where the saucer would be and we'll go ahead and place the saucer next. Let's go ahead and take a look from the back shot. And you can already see how we're kind of filling things up here. Now this next scene involves getting the reaction of Chuck and a few bystanders as they turn around and flee. So there's a couple of ways we can do this with Chuck. Both will involve facial animation. You can come in and use the puppet. You could select Chuck, go to something like sad, uh, or possibly something like angry preview it and see how it works but in this case we're just going to use the face key so let's grab the bottom of the mouth or the, or the side of the mouth there move it down a little on the timeline move the scrubber down and then grab here and pull down we're just going to pull down the bottom of his mouth there and now let's grab the chin and let's open the mouth a little bit. Let's clear that. Let's come back up here to the top. Grab the top of the eyes. And let's go up. Now let's see what that looks like. And that was just simple face key. Now this next section in a static storyboard takes several scenes to convey. But we're actually going to do it all in just one scene here. And that's where we're going to use particle effects. The particles that come with uh, iClone. We're going to use those particles to mimic the beam in a certain way. Now again, you have to remember, this is pre -vis. We're not going to do it exactly like we would in an extremely high-end piece of 3D software. Most times you wouldn't have the budget for that anyway. So we're going to use what we have. And iClone has given us a pretty vast array of particles that are actually quite controllable if you've ever spent time to learn them. Now what we're going to use is the fog particle which you'll find under environment and particles. It's a pretty versatile particle. You can change the colors of it, the area it covers. It's one of those things that you can use to do more than just fog. And it's time to explain something else here uh, in the simulation that I've done. We actually have two buildings here. Underneath this is another building. And what it is, it's one of my uh, destructibles. And what we're doing here, this building doesn't actually blow up. But what it does is it gives us debris. So I've come in at a certain time and I've shut off the visibility on the Empire State Building. And then turned on the visibility to my destructible building which sets right in the same space. And what that does is switch over and give us debris to start falling. Now also, I have attached a fog particle to certain sections of this debris. And what I've done actually 
is attached to see one, two, three, four, five far fog particles, excuse me, to five different fragments of this building. And these particles will fall as this building falls. In order to make things simpler, I have renamed these fog particles so we can keep up with where they're at, like top fog, uh, the second level fog, all the way down to the bottom fog. So let's select top fog. And from there, we're going to move our scrubber down somewhere around, say, 100 or 120. Doesn't really matter. This is just arbitrary. Depends on where you want it to start. And over here with it selected, over on the right-hand side, we'll want to turn the emitter on. Now we want to grab our scrubber, move down a little further. Let's grab the second fog, turn it on. Now, keep moving down. Third scrubber, third fog, turn it on. Keep moving down. Fourth fog, turn it on. Keep moving down. And now we're to our bottom fog and turn it on. So this is what we have. Just kind of envelops the building. It's a cool particle called Passing Flame Storm. It's in the uh, Special Effects Volume 1 Warfare Pack from Real Illusion. You'll find it in the background folder. Now I've double clicked on it to load it. So let's see what it looks like in its stock form and its stock position. Of course we're going to alter it, but that's what it looks like. What we need to do is go into the timeline, make sure we turn on the project, go to our HDR and our IBL strength, and we don't want this to actually happen until just right before we need it to show up. So let's move our first keyframe over at least to 1000 or somewhere fairly close. And we're going to do that on both HDR and IBL strength. Now, hopefully what we'll have is we'll go ahead and see our effects. This way it's, it's not too dark here. And then as it comes over to this keyframe and passes over, it'll start transitioning and darkening the scene a little bit. Now, we don't mind that particular flash right there. We don't mind it flashing until it gets to where it calms down or to where I should say it stabilizes. But that's a bit too much flash. So let's go ahead and move this back to 1000. What I'm doing is highlighting both. And let's see how that works. There's our initial flash. Then it calms back down, settles down. Now we've dealt with that.